Greetings to the audience, to Dr. Willicks, and to our worthy opponents. Our opponent's position is that uh, student achievement scores and student opinion should be an integral part of the teacher evaluation process. However, they offered little discussion uh, about student opinions whatsoever. In fact, they argued uh, more for teach student achievement scores to be couched within a comprehensive teacher evaluation process. But even in that discussion, they offered very little empirical evidence. In fact, most of their argument rested upon uh, two articles, one by Talk and Rothman from 2008 and another one from Betts from 1999, neither of which were empirically um, based articles. In fact, the Betts article um, states that there should be a link between teacher evaluation and student performance, but it offers no empirical evidence and in fact it actually is more of an op-ed. The, they stated that Talk and Rothman's article supported their, their assertion that teacher evaluations and student achievement scores should be part of the multiple measures uh, overall comprehensive teacher evaluation process. However, contrary to what they're saying, Talk and Rothman actually said something um, uh, quite the op opposite. Uh, quote, an advantage of portfolios is that, unlike standardized test scores, they can be used to evaluate teachers in nearly every discipline, unquote, which means standardized, te standardized test scores can't be used in, in every discipline and therefore are not a valid measure of teacher performance. So our question to our opponents is, what empirical evidence do you have to support your claim that student achievement scores and student opinions should be an integral part of a teacher evaluation process. Furthermore, by the very nature of your support of a comprehensive teacher evaluation process, are you not just lending further support to the argument that student achievement scores and student opinions are an invalid measure of teacher performance? That's the reason you are promoting a holistic evaluation. In further research, <coughs> um, uh, it's been found, according to Foreman and Marx in 2015, that poverty, not teacher all effectiveness, accounted for over 60% of the variance in student um, achievement. Thus, with this being said, it would neither be credible, nor fair, nor accurate to base 50% of a teacher evaluation upon something that is almost entirely beyond the control of the teacher. With that understanding, we submit to our opponents, how would using a student achievement scores and student opinions and teacher evaluations be fair, accurate, or credible based upon what we understand concerning factors of student performance that are beyond the control of uh, a teacher within the classroom? Thank you.